everyone, I'm Jay Cottrell, the Global Marketing Communications Manager here at LaserTech. Every Tuesday around 2 p.m. Mountain Time, we go live with a subject matter expert about solutions in traffic safety or professional measurement. You can join us on your coffee break. We're live for about 15 minutes. If you have any questions or comments for our guests or for LaserTech, please go ahead and post them and we'll answer them either in real time or as the subject of another LTI Tuesday at 2 conversation. And today we're continuing our special IACP series with our third episode. This month we are featuring people who are invaluable to the laser tech traffic safety team. So today I am honored to sit down with Roosevelt Rogers, Kevin Fremont, and Craig Wright, who are all from laser tech. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Before we get started, would you mind introducing yourself for anyone who has not had a chance to meet you yet? Uh, Roosevelt, we can begin with you. Uh, Roosevelt Rogers, Chief Revenue Officer, Laser Technology. Roosevelt, how long have you been in public safety? Oh, probably 35 years. Oh. Yeah, if you count my law enforcement experience. Right. Well, How about you, Kevin? Uh, my name is Kevin Fremont. I am the Senior Regional Sales Manager for North Atlantic, based out of New York, and I'll be be 25 years um, this year with LTI. That is a decent amount of time. How about you, Craig? Hey, my name is Craig Wright, uh, South Atlantic Regional Sales Rep, and I've been with Laser Tech for about 20 years. So um, one of the things that we've been talking about when we've talked with Steve Cass Stevens last week on different things that were uh, different initiatives that people are doing around the country and around the world. So in your territories, can you talk about a uh, main safety concern that you're focusing on? What is important to the people in your area? And you can just jump in and start talking. I'll start, I mean, the, really the focus up here in New England has been uh, it's been speed. Uh, pandemic has obviously changed all the way we, we work and we we do our job. But um, in terms of a business, has been good. It's been steady. Uh, main focus again is speed. And uh, lately, we've seen a lot of interest in the LTI True Vision laser. Uh, it's a speed it's a speed laser combined with still images and video. And it's also capable of doing tailgating function or we call it distance between cars, so uh, um, aggressive driving enforcement along with a speed. I'll jump in, Jay. So um, Thanks, I'm going to mirror what Kevin said. So uh, main traffic concern for myself and most agencies that I find in my territory is enforcement relative to uh, traffic crashes. So same thing, uh, the True Vision, I feel like, is probably one of my favorite tools that we have just because it encompasses uh, speed enforcement, distracted driving, um, aggressive driving, and following too closely. So it's, it's a multi-tool that we have that um, offers a lot to agencies where most tools just do one thing. This is a multi-purpose tool, so a lot of agencies really like it for, for that reason. during the pandemic because there's fewer cars on the road. Uh, some areas we've been talking with say that they see the same amount of fatal crashes even though there are fewer cars on the road, which is a concern. It's definitely a concern. I think one of the biggest challenges is not only are people doing super high speeds on interstates and highways, they're doing it on uh, surface streets. You know, I was talking to somebody today that said that uh, some of the 
speaks on there certain streets where it's 45 and above 70. That's pretty fast. Yeah, I'll jump in Roosevelt, too. I wrote down some facts just so um, we all understand what the number of fatalities look like every year. So in 2019, we had 38,800 people lost their life in traffic crashes, which was a 2% decline from 2018. So that, um, and a 4% decline from 2017. And there was also 4.4 million people injured seriously enough to require medical attention uh, in crashes last year, but that's also a 2% decrease over 2018. So that's what the numbers look like. I think a lot of people don't know how many people lose their life and have to emergency room or hospital based off of all these crashes. So it's, it's staggering numbers. Craig, I was really glad to hear that you identified a favorite laser tech product. Sometimes uh, we have people who are willing to commit to a favorite product. Do you have a second favorite? Mm, well, second favorite would be the other side of that. So you have preventative equipment, uh, which is the True Vision. So, you know, all of our lasers, but the True Vision is a, a, a unique tool. So the other side would be once you have a crash or fatality, um, what do you do? What's the next step? So our mapping equipment that kind of coincides with that. So most agencies have our lasers for speed enforcement, for the tailgating aspect, aggressive driving, and all of that. And then they have our mapping system they can deploy when they do need to go out there and reconstruct an accident. So that would be the, my second favorite. They kind of go hand in hand together. How about you, Kevin? Do you have a favorite uh, laser tech product that you'd like to work with the most? I, I, I have to agree with Craig. I, Craig and I have been doing this for, you know, we've been at LTI for so long that uh, crash mapping equipment, and, and we just, LTI does it right. It's it's priced right. It's user friendly. It's designed for law enforcement. It, it's just a, it's a great tool. We call it the incident mapping package. You have a bunch of different options, but now that we're, we're Android based or iOS based in terms of the data collectors, I mean, we can send an officer to a crash scene and they can use their phone as a data collector. So in terms of equipment use, I, I really enjoy that end of the business, the reconstruction part. Um, there's a lot of math, there's a lot of tech in the technical sale, uh, but I enjoy it. And, and I think LTI just does it really well. I mean, there's a lot of options out there, but we make it, it's just a user-friendly law enforcement tool designed for law enforcement. It's really, it's really it's a good tool. How about you, Roosevelt? Do you have a favorite? Um, well, unfortunately, I got to have to go with Craig and Kevin. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny because when we when we first came out with Quick Map back what twenty years ago, y'all remember that it was like a HP forty eight. It had so many buttons on it. We had to create our own cover to put on it. So the police wouldn't match, press the wrong button, right? So we hit all the buttons except for the buttons they need. And it was a scientific calculator. And the, the computers and, I mean, there were smartphones were, were unheard of. BlackBerry was starting to get big. Y'all remember that? Oh, yeah. And now, it, you know, you had to, if you walked into an agency back then and tried to sell them a quick map, Definitely. 
not in the Northeast, Kevin. What's the oldest one that you see around? You know, since I'm going to date myself again here, uh, there's still some marksmen out there in some of these towns and cities that I go to that literally, I mean, I, I started working for Roseville, what, 1997. So, uh, yeah, I mean, serial number, manufacture date, you know, I mean, and they still work and they work well. Maybe it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great name for the company, maybe bad for business, you could argue. Uh, maybe, <laughs> I mean, the stuff just doesn't stop working. I mean, unless you run, we say unless you're going to run it over with a car, it, 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 it's not going to fail on you. So uh, I still see some marksmen out there and still being used to, to this day. So That's, an, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And we had close to that, Kevin, so I'm not going to name agencies, but there was an agency that had a truck drive into this where all the motors were sitting, caught on fire. Three of the motors that caught on fire had ultralights and holsters on them. They sent them back to laser tech because it basically melted and blackened the laser, and all we had to do was really replace all the, the exterior rubber on it, and the laser was fine. I'm like, wow, that's a story. <laughs> it was in Georgia, but I'm not going to tell you who. <laughs> <laughs> so what other things have you seen um, end users measuring? Can you measure pedestrians with these lasers? Can you measure people on bikes? Sure. So you can measure uh, anything if it's moving plus or minus a mile per hour. So bike, joggers. Uh, it's a funny because when we do demonstrations on the side of the road, there might we might have a slow road that we'll, you know we walk out in front of the police department, and so there'll be people walking or bicyclists, and they're like, all right, well let's shoot some of those. And if they don't know, I'm like, hey, shoot the you know shoot the guy jogging or shoot the guy on the bike. At least we'll you know you can kind of see how the, the laser operates. So absolutely. How about you, Kevin? Have you seen any unusual? Yeah. So we're you know. Late in the past year, I've been doing, um, I did the MBTA in Boston for the, the train and bus inspectors. So they're measuring the speed of the trains. With, they call it the T in Boston as it comes into the station. I know the PATH system in New Jersey, we've sold a few lasers there to measure the speeds of the trains by the train inspectors. Um, so, and um, I've seen some use on wave runners. Uh, it's a little bit, boats are difficult. I'm not going to lie. I mean, boats and lasers are tough. Um, what some departments along the shore use the, the you know, the, the typical speed laser, if it's a, if it, it, the wave runner has to be so many feet off the shore, if you can hit the rider, basically you can get a, di maybe not get a speed, but you can definitely get a distance. So there's some interesting applications for, for our equipment. What would you say your biggest challenge during the pandemic has been? Mine again? Um, not <laughs> trap. It is, it, it's awfully difficult to, or I should say limited travel. It's, you know, it's, our, our business is, it's, we build great equipment. There's a lot of great relationships that we've had for years. So it's, it, that's the hard part. Um, but, you know, everything will hopefully at some point go back to normal. But our limited, you know, the ability to move as freely as we did before. Um, but it's, 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 it's going pretty well under the circumstances. Roosevelt, you've been quiet. Do you have anything to add? <laughs> well, I'd probably say, like Kevin, the, the travel and, you know, we have good customers that we like to not only, uh, you know, help them solve problems, but we like hanging out with them too. And that's a big part of our business. So not being able to get out and see them and uh, visit with them is a little stressful. Right, and, the, and also the dynamics and the nature of law enforcement over the past six or seven months is that traffic enforcement stopped in, in most cities. So, you know, officers aren't getting out and getting into the public and doing traffic enforcement. So we're not going out, and, you know, like we're talking about, and just being able to go out and see agencies. So they, a lot of them have started back up now, but they're 
traffic officers to keep uh, safety, especially with COVID, balanced with safety of the community as well. Right. That'll be a tough choice. So to wrap up today, uh, in honor of a longtime fan of ours, Vinny Albino, uh, what is your favorite pizza topping? <laughs> Cheese and mushrooms. Pepperoni. Okay. Thank you. on his pizza, nothing else. So anytime I ask people what their favorite topping is, it's obviously going to be more than what he likes. So, yeah. <laughs> or meat lovers. A meat lover is always oh. awesome. I'm just not a pepperoni guy, so I have to pull the pepperonis off. Yeah, I don't like anchovies, so we'll take the anchovies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't do anchovies. Well, this has been really fun. Have we forgotten anything? Is there anything that you want, any ideas you want to leave with our listeners today? The only thing I can say is everybody just needs to stay safe and uh, stop this uptick in virus. People going to the hospital and catching the virus. And I think as long as we do everything we can, we stay in control. And thank you to any of our viewers that are on here. So thank you. Right. Yeah. yeah thank you. Wear your mask when you go out. I'd like to thank everyone for spending some time with us today. Any new questions that are posted on the recording will be passed along by the marketing team. To be alerted about upcoming Tuesday at two events, don't forget to like and follow LaserTech's page. Uh, taking a look ahead, next week on October 27th, we'll be sitting down with Cassie Carley. She is our Solutions and Traffic Safety Product Manager. And until then, drive safe and wear your mask, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Thanks.